A stirrup is a light frame or ring that holds the foot of a rider, attached to the saddle by a strap, often called a stirrup leather. Stirrups are usually paired and are used to aid in mounting and as a support while using a riding animal. They greatly increase the rider's ability to stay in the saddle and control the mount, increasing the animal's usefulness to humans in areas such as communication, transportation and warfare. In antiquity, the earliest foot supports consisted of riders placing their feet under a girth or using a simple toe loop. Later, a single stirrup was used as a mounting aid, and paired stirrups appeared after the invention of the treat saddle. The stirrup was invented in China in the first few centuries CE, and spread westward through the nomadic peoples of Central Eurasia. The use of paired stirrups is credited to the Chinese Jin dynasty and came to Europe during the Middle Ages. Some argue that the stirrup was one of the basic tools used to create and spread modern civilization, possibly as important as the wheel or printing press. Modern stirrups come in a wide variety of styles, sizes and materials and are attached to most saddles by means of adjustable stirrup leathers, which can be altered in length to fit both the size of the rider and the need to remain over the horse's optimal center of balance for a given equestrianism discipline. There are safety concerns associated with the use of stirrups including a risk that a fallen rider may get their foot caught in the stirrup and be dragged by the horse, or that long hours of use without rest may cause problems in the human foot Speronius tertius tendon. Etymology The English word stirrup stems from Old English stirrup, stigriff, Middle English stirrup, styrope, i.e., a mounting or climbing rope, from Old English stigin, to ascend. History the stirrup, which gives greater stability to a rider, has been described as one of the most significant inventions in the history of warfare, prior to gunpowder. As a tool allowing expanded use of horses in warfare, the stirrup is often called the third revolutionary step in equipment. After the chariot and the saddle, the basic tactics of mounted warfare were significantly altered by the stirrup. A rider supported by stirrups was less likely to fall off while fighting, and could deliver a blow with a weapon that more fully employed the weight and momentum of horse and rider. Among other advantages, stirrups provided greater balance and support to the rider, which allowed the knight to use a sword more efficiently without falling, especially against infantry adversaries. Contrary to common modern belief, however, it has been asserted that stirrups actually did not enable the horseman to use a lance more effectively, though the cantled saddle did. Early development The invention of the stirrup occurred relatively late in history, considering that horses were domesticated in approximately 4500 BCE and the earliest known saddle-like equipment were fringed cloths or pads with breast pads and cruppers used by Assyrian cavalry around 700 BCE. The earliest manifestation of the stirrup was a toe loop that held the big toe and was used in India late in the 2nd century BCE, though may have appeared as early as 500 BCE. This ancient foot support consisted of a looped rope for the big toe which was at the bottom of a saddle made of fiber or leather. Such a configuration was suitable for the warm climate of South and Central India where people used to ride horses barefoot. A pair of megalithic double-bent iron bars with curvature at each end, excavated in Junapana in the central Indian state of Madhya Pradesh have been regarded as stirrups although they could as well be something else. Buddhist carvings in the temples of Sanchi, Mathura and the Badger Caves dating back between the 1st and 2nd century BCE, figure horsemen riding with elaborate saddles with feet slipped under girths. In this regard archaeologist John Marshall described the Sanchi relief as the earliest example by some five centuries of the use of stirrups in any part of the world. Later, a single stirrup was used as a mounting aid by a nomadic group known as the Sarmatians. The invention of the solid saddle tree allowed development of the true stirrup as it is known today. Without a solid tree, the rider's weight in the stirrups creates abnormal pressure points and make the horse's back sore.
Modern thermography studies on treeless and flexible tree saddle designs have found that there is considerable friction across the center line of a horse's back. A coin of Quintus Labianus, who was in service of Parthia, minted circa 39 BCE, depicts on its reverse a saddled horse with hanging objects. Smith suggests they are pendant cloths, while Thayer suggests that, considering the fact that the Parthians were famous for their mounted archery, the objects are stirrups, but adds that it is difficult to imagine why the Romans would never have adopted the technology. In Asia, early solid treed saddles were made of felt that covered the wooden frame. These designs date to approximately 200 BCE. One of the earliest solid treed saddles in the West was first used by the Romans as early as the 1st century BCE, but this design also did not have stirrups. The first dependable representation of a rider with paired stirrups was found in China in a Jin Dynasty tomb of about 322 CE. The stirrup appeared to be in widespread use across China by 477 CE. Stirrups in Europe by the late 6th or early 7th century, primarily due to invaders from Central Asia, such as the Avars. Stirrups began spreading across Asia to Europe from China. In terms of archaeological finds, the iron pear-shaped form of stirrups, the ancestor of medieval European types, has been found in Europe in 7th century of our graves in Hungary. A total of 111 specimens of early of our age, apple-shaped, cast iron stirrups with elongated suspension loop and flat, Slightly inward bent tread had been excavated from 55 burial sites in Hungary and surrounding regions by 2005. The first European literary reference to the stirrup may be in the strategy icon, traditionally ascribed to the Byzantine emperor Maurice. Maurice's manual notes the appropriate equipping of imperial cavalry. The saddles should have large and thick clothes, the bridles should be of good quality, attached to the saddles should be two iron steps, scala, a lasso with a thong. Dennis notes that the lack of specific Greek word for stirrup evidences their novelty to the Byzantines, who are supposed to have adopted these from their bitter enemy the Avars, and subsequently passed them on to their future enemies, the Arabs. An early 7th century date is secured for most Hungarian finds of stirrups with elongated suspension loops, though some of these must even be dated to before 600. Literary and archaeological evidence taken together may indicate that the stirrup was in common military use in south-central Europe and the eastern Mediterranean by the latter half of the 6th century with the Byzantine Empire having them in use by the year 600. By the 8th century stirrups began to be adopted more widely by Europeans. The earliest stirrups of Western Europe, those of Budenheim and Regensburg, were either brought from the Avar Kaganate as booty or gifts, or were local imitations of stirrups in use at that time among Avar warriors. However, the Avar-style stirrups were not as widely adopted in Western Europe. Stirrups do not appear in the Merovingian and Italo-Lombard milieu in large numbers, nor as frequently as within the Carpathian Basin. Most other stirrups found in Germany that date to the 7th century do not resemble the iron Avar-style commonly found in burial assemblages from Hungary and neighboring regions. Instead, hanging mounts occasionally found in burial assemblages in southern Germany suggest the use of wooden stirrups. The scarcity of early medieval stirrup finds in Western Europe was noted by Bernard Batrach. Out of 704 8th-century male burials excavated in Germany until SIC 1967, only 13 had stirrups. The earliest stirrups in the Baltic region are replicas of those in existence in Germany during the 7th century. In Northern Europe and Britain the metamorphosis of earlier wood Rope and leather forms of stirrups to metal forms can be seen in the archaeological record, suggesting that one or more of the early forms have parallel development with those in Hungary, rather than being derived solely from the latter region. In Scandinavia two major types of stirrups are discerned, and from these, 
by the development and fusion of different elements, some almost certainly of Central European origin. Most other types were evolved. The first main type, Scandinavian Type 1, appears to a little to Hungarian forms. The earliest variety of this type can be dated to the 8th century in Vendel Grave 3 in Sweden. The second principal type in North Europe has, as its most characteristic feature, a pronounced rectangular suspension loop set in the same plane as the bow, as found amongst the Hungarian examples and is predominantly centred in Denmark and England during the later 10th and 11th centuries. A variant of this type, called the North European stirrup, has been dated to the second half of the 10th century in Sweden, found at the boat burial cemetery at Valsgarda, in Denmark from the 920s to the 980s, during the reign of the Jelen kings. Many leading Danes were buried with military honours and equipped with stirrups, bits and spurs, in what are called cavalry graves, found mostly in North Jutland, into England, it is argued. Stirrups were not introduced by the Scandinavian settlers of the 9th century but are more likely related to later Viking raids led by Cnut the Great, and others during the reign of King Ethelred. In what today is France, Charles Martel distributed seized lands to his retainers on condition that they serve him by fighting in the new manner, which some attribute to his recognizing the military potentialities of the stirrup. Later, Charlemagne ordered his poorer vassals to pull their resources and provide a mounted and armed knight, though the system proved unworkable, and instead the system of distributing land to vassals based on a knight's service was developed. Great stirrup controversy The introduction of the stirrup not only made the mounted warrior supreme in medieval warfare, but may have initiated complex and far-reaching social and cultural changes in Europe. Some scholars credit the birth of feudalism and its subsequent spread into northern Italy, Spain, Germany and into the Slavic territories to this use of the stirrup. It is argued that the rising feudal class structure of the European Middle Ages derived ultimately from the use of stirrups. Few inventions have been so simple as the stirrup, but few have had so catalytic an influence on history. The requirements of the new mode of warfare which it made possible found expression in a new form of Western European society dominated by an aristocracy of warriors endowed with land so that they might fight in a new and highly specialized way. Other scholars dispute this assertion, suggesting that stirrups may provide little advantage in shock warfare but are useful primarily in allowing a rider to lean farther to the left and right on the saddle while fighting, and simply reduce the risk of falling off. Therefore, it is argued, they are not the reason for the switch from infantry to cavalry in medieval armies, nor the reason for the emergence of feudalism. Japanese stirrups Stirrups were used in Japan as early as the 5th century. They were flat-bottomed rings of metal-covered wood, similar to European stirrups. The earliest known examples were excavated from tombs. Cup-shaped stirrups that enclose the front half of the rider's foot eventually replaced the earlier design. During the Nara period, the base of the stirrup which supported the rider's sole was elongated past the toe cup. This half-dunged style of stirrup remained in use until the late Heian period when a new stirrup was developed. The Fukuro Abumi or Musashi Abumi had a base that extended the full length of the rider's foot and the right and left sides of the toe cup were removed. The open sides were designed to prevent the rider from catching a foot in the stirrup and being dragged. The military version of this open-sided stirrup was in use by the Middle Heian period. It was thinner, had a deeper toe pocket, and an even longer and flatter foot shelf. This stirrup stayed in use until European-style stirrup rings were reintroduced in the late 19th century. It is not known why the Japanese developed this unique style of stirrup. These had a distinctive swan-like shape, curved up and backward at the front so as to bring the loop for the leather strap over the instep and achieve a correct balance. Most of the surviving specimens from this period are made entirely of iron, inlaid with designs of silver or other materials.
and covered with lacquer. In some examples there is an iron rod from the loop to the footplate near the heel to prevent the foot from slipping out. The footplates are occasionally perforated to let out water when crossing rivers, and these types are called sweeberabumi. There are stirrups with holes in the front forming sockets for a lance or banner. Stirrup leathers. Because a rider must be able to move his or her legs while riding, stirrups cannot be attached on the body of the saddle itself, but rather must be attached in a manner that allows the rider's leg a full range of motion. Therefore, stirrups are attached to a saddle by means of adjustable straps, called stirrup leathers. Depending on the design of a saddle, stirrup leathers may be attached to a stirrup bar, a small forged steel bar embedded into the saddle tree, or may be wrapped around the bars of the tree itself. Because different riders are of different heights, and stirrups also may need to be adjusted up or down to accommodate different types of activity. Stirrup leathers have buckles and holes that allow length to be adjusted. On an English saddle, leathers are quite thin, only about one inch wide. On a western saddle, they are very heavy, three to four inches wide on the side closest to the horse, and even wider, expanded into a decorative fender on the outside. Stirrup leathers on other saddle designs fall in between the extremes represented by the English and western saddles. Stirrup leathers are usually manufactured so that the smooth side of the leather faces the wearing surface, as the smooth side wears less quickly than the rough side. There are also modern alternatives to leather, including nylon, plastic-covered nylon or leather over a nylon reinforced core. These new leathers may last longer and also resist stretching. On the other hand, they may chafe and rub the leg, and poorly made products may break more easily than leather. As the rider's whole weight must be carried at one side when mounting on an English saddle, one stirrup leather often becomes stretched longer than the other, usually the left one, because most mounting occurs on that side, while a simple adjustment of the leather can even up the stirrups to preserve the integrity and longevity of the leathers. They should be switched to the opposite sides from time to time. On a western saddle, with a heavier, permanently installed fender and stirrup leather that cannot be switched, stretching is slower and less extreme, though it also occurs in this type of saddle. Any unevenness in the leathers can be managed by adjusting the stirrup length, and if necessary, by adding extra holes in the leathers to allow them to be buckled at an intermediate point between the existing pre-punched holes provided by the saddle manufacturer.